So kids, this is my State of the Scoob address. This is much like my State of the Hogwarts address, which was named simply uh, after the um, State of the Union address that the President usually gives. So this one is about Scooby-Doo. I am making this video to clarify a few things. Um, especially when it concerns the Velma video that I previously made. When I said Velma is gay, it refers namely to modern Velma. Classic Velma, not so much, because I realize that it's more of a joke if you're talking about classic Velma, and we're going to use it as a joke for classic Velma. But modern Velma is at least bi. I will settle for bi because I understand that not everyone is comfortable saying out and out gay. So we'll go with that. And also, unless we're talking Mystery Incorporated, in which case, out and out gay. But they couldn't say it because that was then. This is now. <laughs> also, um, in reference to uh, Scooby, the, there are some movies, well, there is a movie that is supposed to be coming out, well, it was supposed to come out, but Warner Brothers Discovery merged and caused a hoopla, and we may or may not ever see Holiday Haunts. I hope we do get to see it, it's supposed to be pretty cute. It's set in the Scoob universe, Scoob is the more modern attempt at a pup named Scooby-Doo, I think. I haven't seen Scoob. I need to watch it. I will be watching it probably this weekend. I haven't decided yet. But there's that. Um, and also, there is the new adult series. The first ever adult Scooby-Doo series. Technically, you could say Mystery Incorporated if you want to get super specific. I mean, it wasn't aimed at adults specifically, but it did get close to being an adult series but this one is called Velma I have no idea what direction they'll put Velma in but regardless I hope that they just portray Velma nicely and they don't uh, ruin too much I could care less about the um, the sexuality aspect I'm an ally so it makes me happy when they have representation but representation is not my main goal here my main thing when making the Velma is Gay video is specifically for two reasons. One, to praise Mystery Incorporated and also just praise the fact that they even thought to make her gay in the first place. Or bisexual, if you'd like to look at it that way. And two, to feed into the classic, the joke for classic Velma of Velma is gay. Um, lesbian, however you'd like to say that. So, it's mostly to feed into the joke, but it is also to praise Mystery Incorporated because it does need to be praised for that. Because as an ally, um, I feel it is my duty to praise those things when it does show up because there isn't a lot of representation in media all, a lot of the time. And um, I'm also bringing this up to say that when I mention gay best friend, this isn't specifically related to Scooby, uh, but I've been made aware of some things. And um, gay best friend is not Iron Zebra, just so everyone is clear. Uh, gay best friend is someone I used to work with. Um, and he got the nickname Gay Best Friend because I couldn't think of a good nickname for him. Um, because everyone I talk about in my channel, that I know personally, that does not have a YouTube channel themselves, um, and or does not want me, does not care if I use their name or something, they get a nickname. Most of the time when I come up with a nickname, it's usually something quick and easy. Uh, sometimes I'm not good at it. Like, like in the case of Gay Best Friend, or it's like there's some other people uh, that I have not come up with good nicknames for. So, I apologize for any um, misconceptions. I don't want people thinking Gay Best Friend is Iron Zebra. No, Iron Zebra is Iron Zebra. <laughs> uh, 
Now, um, and I only bring that up just to clear anything up for any of, uh, any viewers, because I know it can be confusing. But, yes. Iron Zebra is Iron Zebra. Gay Best Friend is a totally different person. Um, but... Going back to uh, the meat and potatoes of this video, Scooby-Doo, I'm actually excited for the new Velma series. Now, I had mentioned that this was... I might not... Uh, well, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this, but as a big Scooby fan, um, I'm actually looking forward to the new stuff coming. So there's, of course, Velma... And there's another, there's a preschool show for Scooby-Doo, which is actually the first time they've done that. I mean, I guess, technically you could say a pup named Scooby-Doo, but it wasn't really a preschool series. It was more like a, it was like Scooby-Doo for the little kids, but not really. It was like, eh, I don't know. So, I'm excited for that. The one thing I will say is that if they... At least in, I don't know, um, at least in Velma, if they go in a super dark, gritty direction, that's going to be good. I cannot wait to see that. And then as far as the preschool series, I hope they don't wreck it. Something tells me they're going to do something pretty bad. Like, I don't mind if you're going to sit there and do something like, Where's the green square? We need the green square to solve the mystery. Like, if you're going to go the Blue's Clues route, that's a good what direction to go in. Or it's like Scooby being the old wise dog who is teaching all these other puppies, because I've only seen mostly just some, like, leaked images and stuff. I have not seen a synopsis quite yet. I need to. But if they go in the direction of... Why is old Scooby teaching these puppies how to solve mysteries and start their own, like, mystery and mini mystery incorporated? That I'd like to see. But if they're just going to make it be a Paw Patrol competitor, I, I don't know if I'm going to want to see that. I am not anti-Paw Patrol. Quite the opposite. I like Paw Patrol. However, I do want to make it clear that I will be enjoying the uh, new preschool Scooby regardless. I do not care for the whole... You're an adult, you shouldn't watch that kind of mentality. I don't agree with it. I think anybody should watch anything that they care for, as long as they're not hurting anyone else with what they like to enjoy to watch. Within reason, because there are some cases where you're either not old enough for something, or you might be making other people uncomfortable. But regardless, I'm excited for the new Scooby, uh, both of them. I hope Holiday Haunts comes out, because I can't wait to see that. And I especially... Especially would like to see some more stuff with Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. Like, for example, I want to see them have Chris Angel on the show. Um, and for those who are not aware, Chris Angel is a magician. He is the mind freak. He currently has a show in Las Vegas, or he did. I don't know if he still does. Because when uh, Grandma Puzzle Skunk and I went to Las Vegas, I did see some signs for Mind Freak up. So he might still have the show there. And this was... Like, 2020, I want to say? Maybe 2021? I can't quite remember. But something like that. So, um... I want to see Chris Angel be on Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. And for those who don't know, Scooby-Doo and Guess Who is basically a rehash of Scooby, the new Scooby-Doo movies. Which, for those... Uh, I might be remembering my Scooby incorrectly... But, uh, for those who don't know, that one's the one where they would have the new celebrity of the week, basically. It's like, they've met, it's how you got things like Scooby-Doo meets the Harlem Globetrotters, or Scooby-Doo meets Laurel and Hardy, and then there was, like, Scooby-Doo meets the Addams Family, which, okay, uh, it, they're gonna do that. Can we please have Scooby-Doo meets the Monsters? I want Scoob and the gang to meet the Monsters. Because if Scoob and the gang are gonna meet anybody, they should legitimately meet the Monsters. But, like, I get why they would do the Addams Family, because Hanna-Barbera did eventually make the Addams Family cartoon. And, also, I think they had another cartoon, too, but I could be remembering wrong. So, I get why they chose that, because, like, the monsters, I don't think, ever made it to animated form. They should have. I mean, Scoob meeting the monsters would be awesome. 
uh, if they did that, that would be great. But Scooby-Doo, um, I can guess who basically follows the same principle. So they meet a different celebrity every week. Like, they've met Guy Fieri that way. There was, uh, I want to say Chris Paul. It was either Chris Paul or LeBron James. I'm going Chris Paul because I can't quite remember and I could, I'm pretty sure it was Chris Paul. So they have Chris Paul, Guy Fieri. I think I saw Morgan Freeman being advertised. Um, let's see. Uh, those are the only ones I can think of right this minute. They should get Jack Black if they haven't had Jack Black. Um, because that would be really funny. Oh, and I think they did Matt, uh, not Matt Damon, um, shoot, I can't think of his name now. And it's funny because Scooby-Topia did a video, um, talking about Scoob and the gang in, Italy, in the country of Italy. And, um, he mentioned this one celebrity, but I can't remember his name right now. So, we, uh, and I don't want to say Matt Damon because it wasn't Matt Damon. It was somebody else, but I really can't remember what his name is now. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, so there's another guy. But um, they really should add Jack Black if they haven't. Because I could easily see... I could easily see Jack Black hanging with them. And, like, Chris Angel. Now, the reason I want Chris Angel to be on Scooby-Doo and Guess Who is because I could easily see there being a mystery involving another magician. Like, a rival magician who kind of is mad that Chris is doing better than him and decides to try to sabotage Chris. So Chris gets upset about it. And, well, not, like, upset, like, uh, like he quit, but, like, he's, like, he keeps, sab you know, this weird ghost wizard thing keeps sabotaging my show. And I need to do this show because it's special because it's for my son Christopher. And uh, for those who don't know, he has a son. His name is, is Christopher. Christopher actually... Um, now I battled and beat, uh, the last I heard. Something else could have happened, I'm not sure, but battled and beat, uh, childhood cancer. So he's, like, in the context of the show, he would be doing this show to raise money for Make-A-Wish. So he's like, I'm doing this show specifically to raise money for Make-A-Wish, but this wizard guy or something keeps messing with me. Now, I would say wizard guy, like, because... Okay, we could do magician, like Ghost of the Magician. Like I would say, like Ghost of the Magician that haunt, that used to perform the thing, or like Ghost of Harry Houdini or something. But you know, well, we could do that, and then it turns out to be a jaded magician who turns out to be um, basically a cheap party magician in comparison to Chris. And um, during the course of solving the mystery. Chris does a few magic tricks that both confuse Velma, because she's the extremely scientific-minded, sci magic doesn't really exist, um, we're not counting Goblin King for this instance, because it, Goblin King is a weird kind of worms that I do intend to get into, but that's, we're not going to talk about that today. But, um, so she doesn't understand how he does all the things that he does. Like, of course, there's, like, wires and things, and she thinks that, but he doesn't make it obvious. So, like, one time, while they're trying to, f they find a clue, or they're trying to find a clue, he does a trick to confuse her, and it turns out to, that she thinks it's part of one of the clues, but it turns out to be one of his magic tricks. And then they find another, an actual clue that she thinks is one of his magic tricks, but it turns out to be a clue. So he's throwing her off her game. And then they eventually solve them. They solve the mystery, and you know, the usual he gets arrested and whatever. But I would like to see Chris Angel be a part of Scooby Doo and Guess Who. I want to see Jack Black. Um, I would also very much love to see some YouTubers be on Scooby Doo and Guess Who too. So, like for example, um. There's a guy, I forgot what his name is right off the top of my head, but we'll call him Seductive because his his channel name is Seductive, and he has this adorable duck, and the duck's name is Wrinkle. Wrinkle is a sweetheart. I want to see them on Scooby-Doo and guess who, him and the duck, because he can juggle. So, like, I just had this picture of, like, Wrinkle, like, him and Wrinkle showing up, and, like, Wrinkle helping solve the mystery, because, like, Wrinkle, uh, in the context of Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, I would totally like to see Wrinkle actually be able to speak the same way Scooby can speak. Because that would be fun. And, like, have him, the guy, 
looks like Johnny Depp, so we can just call him Johnny Depp's mini me. <laughs> Basically, like juggling, like helping Shaggy make sa a sandwich, like a couple of sandwiches, because Shaggy's like, I'm hungry. You should make us a sandwich. And of course, he agrees, and then they start, and then of course, you know, he starts juggling the sandwiches, and then Scooby beats them all. <laughs> And then everybody confusing him for Johnny Depp, they're like, oh, look, it's Johnny Depp. And they could even make a joke about that in the actual credits. It's like, what are we doing? Guess who? It's Johnny Depp. No, I'm seductive. <laughs> it's Johnny Depp. No, I'm seductive. It's Johnny Depp. No, I'm seductive. I, I, yeah, I think that'd be pretty funny. I wish I could actually remember his name right now, but I can't. <laughs> and I could Google it, but that would take too long. So... Uh, that would be funny. <laughs> and, uh, I would like to also make mention that the changes they made to Velma in the, uh, Multiverses game, I get why they did it, because that basically made Velma a Karen, but, like, I kind, and also I get it too, because, they might eventually add, um, there are some black characters in, like, the, uh, DCU that are there, probably, like, namely if they add, uh, the black version of Green Lantern, which I cannot remember his name. I don't think it's actually Hal. It might be a different one. But that one, or, like, some of the other ones, if they were to add him, or, you know, any of the other ones, and they left that the way it is, that would be highly offensive. So I get it. And plus, yeah, what's the point of having Velma if you're not going to call the rest of the gang to help you? <laughs> and of course, Ultra, Inst Ultra Instinct Shaggy, but that is a whole nother story. Um, that we won't go into because that's not what we're here for. What we are here for is to also uh, make the statement that I um, love Scooby-Doo a whole bunch and... I want to also make it known that I do intend to continue Scooby Month, but uh, I also intend to uh, take my time and try to do more scripted content. I'm actually going to try to my hand at scripting content now because I would like to try to see if I can organize my thoughts better. Um, also, uh, for Scooby Month, there will be uh, no more videos feeding into the any memes. So don't expect anything like me trying to talk, make a video about Ultra Instinct Shaggy. Uh, nothing, the closest thing you're going to get to a meme is me yelling about Be Cool Scooby-Doo being garbage and uh, me yelling that the live action films are garbage. That's about all you're going to get. Because I hate Be Cool Scooby-Doo and the live action films. So that's about all you will get out of me as far as that. Um, yeah, I want to also point out that our schedule for uploads might change a little bit, not too much, so I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do a few videos more frequently, of course, next month's not going to be themed, I'm not doing theming, so it's going to go back to our usual Friday schedule, I only chose to do uh, Scoob, Scooby Month and Back to Hogwarts Month because Back to Hogwarts Month specifically because I was celebrating the uh, 25th, I think it was 25th, was it 25th? Yeah, or 20th or 25th anniversary of the, the Harry Potter films coming out. Sp or the first one, I mean, specifically. Uh, Philosopher's Stone. Um, and Scoob Month is because it's Halloween and I do like spooky things, but I want to do uh, safe spooky things. So... I won't be talking about it or anything like that because I don't want to spook people. I do, but I don't want to talk about it because I know Iron Zebra and company do not like it or like other horror movies. So that's why I don't talk about those. That's why I chose to be new. Not because I I don't watch a lot of Goosebumps. I'm not I'm no Goosebumps expert. Heck, I'm not even really a Scooby expert. I'm kind of more of what you would call a casual. Not casual. I'm kind of more of what you would call a good Scooby fan. Like, I'm not casual level, but I'm not extreme. I'm not the... I am not at the level of fan for Scooby-Doo that I am for Harry Potter. 
so I know things about Scooby Doo. I enjoy Scooby Doo, I will gladly listen to a, sit and listen for hours about facts about Scooby Doo. I don't even sit there and listen to like Scooby stories and watch Scooby movies. But I am not going to call myself a mega fan because I'm not a mega fan. I'm nowhere near as good as a Scooby fan as Scooby Topia. Um, and uh, I should also point out really quick before I do go who Scooby Topia is. Scooby Topia is a YouTuber that I happened to find by mistake once because I do listen to movie, cartoon, and TV show reviews. It's one of the things I listen to at work because we're allowed to have music at work. And I generally prefer to listen to TV, movie, and cartoon reviews because it's not music. I don't like music per se because music is music is good and all, but it's catchy. And when, I start, when I'm listening to music, I get the boogieing and I don't like the boogie. So, uh... You know, I don't like to get down, you know, get down on it. I don't want to be doing all that. So I listen to stuff like uh, Saber Spark and some other ones. And occasionally a Lazy Game Reviews and some other assorted YouTubers. So I accidentally found Scoobytopia one day. I forget which video I found. But I found them by mistake. It was a good mistake. I found them by accident and I started listening then I wa actually sat there and watched one of his videos because I'd mostly just been listening and not watching because it was at work. But one day I got home, I actually sat down and properly sat there and looked at the video. And the quality was good and the content was good. And I said, all right, I'm subscribing. And he is actually my source for a lot of Scooby content. <laughs> so he's the reason I'm even more of a Scoob fan. And actually, to go with my Halloween costume, which, by the way, um, I am going to be showing you a, um, one of my props for my Halloween costume once it's finished. Uh, that will be a video for Scooby Month. Um, and I'm also going to get me a uh, Scooby-Doo plush. It's another prop, because I'm going as Velma. That's also the thing that sparked me doing Scooby Month this month. I'm going as Velma from Scooby-Doo for my Halloween contest at work. So I'm going to go as Velma and I am going to um, have me a laptop and a magnifying glass and a Scooby plush. Be yeah, it's twofold. I go overboard for Halloween because I like to try to win, uh, number one. Number two, I want a Scooby plush because I want a Scooby plush. I actually don't have one and I want one in my collection. Uh, and number three... Why not? It's Scooby Doo. Scooby plush. Yes, please. <laughs> so, and I'm more likely to win. And also, like, Velma is recognizable. Velma is that one character that if some if someone gets it wrong, you can tell. And if somebody gets it right, you can tell. And then it's like, oh, she's so iconic that, like, if somebody screws it up when they try to do it, it's obvious. But it's also obvious, like I said, when they do it right. Or if somebody is trying. Like, as long as you get the colors right, at the very least, you can actually... Somebody could pick it out. It'd be like, oh, orange total neck and, like, burgundy? I think that's the right color. Burgundy? Yeah. Burgundy skirt? Oh, it's Velma. So, I, yeah. And, like, there was only one prop that came with my costume. They are like, well, you could do a, you know, add a science book or a laptop. Well, I chose laptop because eh, I don't want to have an extra, I don't want a book in my hand. It's just boring. Also, I was like, a laptop would be better because it's tactile. So, I could actually have it and go tap, tap, tap as I'm walking in the parade line like I am typing on a PC. Well, I got a Mac, but I can be typing on the PC as I go for more effect and more likely that I'll win. <laughs> and then I decided, I said, I said, I need to get me a Scooby plush because why not? You know, Scooby-Doo! Because, <laughs> you know, I love me some Scoob and I needed another plushie in my collection because I love stuffed animals. They make me happy. They are also something I like collecting because they are just plain soft and squishy and cuddly. But uh, I did not have a Scooby plush. I may have at one point in my lifetime, but I do not now, and I need one. Well, I don't need it. Well, okay. I need it for my Halloween costume, but I don't need it to have in my collection. But I really want it in my collection. So, I'm going to get it. So, I'm going to do that. And that's going to be a video, um, but I wanted to also thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, share.